Hey. Hey. We back again. <laughs> we didn't. We still didn't go anywhere. <laughs> we de- definitely didn't go anywhere. Um, man, uh, this is so some fun little stats here, y'all. Uh, this is we are two episodes into our our season six, right? We do them every quarter. Uh, so this is episode two of season six, but this is also episode one hundred and nine, almost at one hundred and ten. And y'all, this week. We are bound to hit 100,000 downloads. Thank you all for, for doing that for us and listening and subscribing to us on this, uh, on this platform. Honestly, couldn't be here without y'all. So thank you. That's huge for us. Uh, what do you think about that? You have no thoughts? I mean, <laughs> um, my thoughts is you, they could do better. No, nah, damn. I'm playing, I'm playing. Damn, I'm damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. It's, I mean, it's insane. We thought zero people would listen, and now thousands of people listen. So hundred thousand down. That that's that's amazing. That's amazing. That's yeah. quite the. Uh, There's literally thousands of you listening. Yeah, right. Which is that's crazy. That is. We ain't got no wild. manager. We don't have no big company. <laughs> you know, like nothing. No sponsor. We broke. No big, nobody paying us. Nothing, I was like, <laughs> shit. This is. I mean, not not a completely. You know what I mean? But no, 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 I'm just playing. But this is it's dope. It's, you don't have a full time job, so clearly, right. This is working. This out is for working us, out. You like, know, then a hundred thousand. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Before we turn two, we turn two next month, y'all. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or two months and from also, now, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to explain ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is dope. So uh, that's how we're gonna start this episode. Now, this is a dope episode, y'all. This is a very dope episode. Are you ready? Yeah. Cool. Let's get it. Seventy-seven flavors. It's Sarah and it's Dario, and we traveled through all of Chicago's seventy-seven community areas. We shared some great stories and took you to our favorite restaurants. But you know what? There's more Chicago history and food to discover. So join us as we connect you. To the greatest city in the world. You know why? Because this is 77 Flavors of Chicago. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, buddy. 77 flavor of them things. Mm. <laughs> 77 of them things. We need, a, we need a different name for when we get discovered and asked to do this around the world. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, look, y'all help us out. We, we've been trying to ponder this. Uh, been trying we've to... been trying to ponder this. Yeah. What does that mean? Think about it. We you haven't heard the ponder is a word. One, I know it is. Yeah, yeah. But we've, we've been, been trying to think about it. Yeah, we have been trying. To, we've been or we've been thinking about yeah. it. We've been pondering. There you go. Look at look at you. Oh wait, <laughs> somebody's like now. Someone's like you. So you failing? That was you're a good trying catch. and failing to think the, about you it. Know? <laughs> a good catch. Good catch. Touche. I'm always gonna be on your ass. Yeah, you, know you know what what I mean? clearly. That's wow. Relax. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> too early for this it's too early in the episode is it people are listening to this at <laughs> six in the morning six thirty. they're going midnight. on their way to work midnight yeah, and got all these in your windows mm. anyway uh did, um what was i talking about uh, we've been pondering oh this. we've been pondering we've been trying to think about it we've been trying to have thoughts dario's been attempting to think yeah right <laughs> <laughs> this whole time uh 109, whole time. 109 episodes i'm just now starting to think. Yeah. i've been thinking this whole time uh but what should, what should we call ourselves 77 flavors of chicago and seven continents no no okay we can't That's why. continue to be 77 flavors of chicago i mean we could be like the seven what would it be i mean because we struck fire with this this title yeah. we struck fire you know when the time is right it'll come right that's what she said <laughs> Let me let me let me get that to you because that was good. That's what she said. Thank you. <laughs> that was also um. that's what she said. Let me give it to you. That's what she said. All right, okay. okay, all right, okay. This episode's already on uh, Yeah, it is. It um, is. <laughs> I don't know. You know what's crazy is like you don't know what's like we literally our life changes like month to month, <laughs> day to day, really, week to week. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes th- we get emails and we're like, "Oh shit!" For who? Yeah. Oh <laughs> for shit! Us. So we're very grateful. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, dope. It's dope. It's dope. It's lit out here, y'all. It's lit out here. Um, but uh, that honestly, I can't get over the, it, for this to be where we cross over a hundred thousand. This episode, y'all. Yeah. Uh, this episode, we probably is, already. What? Nothing. Yeah this this episode is uh this episode is dope. Um, and I don't know. We talked about um, we talk about the 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 Chicago Public Library, right? This is part of our you know the new thing. Well. Right, right, right. Right. You know what I mean? Like the the second wave of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, CTA, travel, using our resources. Public, city resources. Yeah. You know what I mean? And city money if they're trying to give it to us. Hey, we'll, holla. Take, we'll take it. Holla. <laughs> we'll we hit it. it. Yep. <laughs> 
Y'all get uh, my bank account number is now. Yeah, right, uh-huh. right. Routing. Uh, <laughs> our, our W our W nine is, yeah, is in the right. link in our bio. We can easily send that to you. Uh, but uh, we use the public resources so that we yes. can show that it is everybody can use it. Right? That's it's the, free. It's free. Well, not you know CTA, I mean? but yeah, the right, library right, is right, right. free. CTA is affordable. You know, right, to say that. Yeah. Yeah. You know the. Um, the library is, I think, is like one of the coolest and most underutilized resources in the city mm-hmm. because it's literally not just books. Like, yeah. you can get so much from the, the library here in the city. Mm-hmm. It's kind of wild. You like, can. especially if you have kids mm-hmm. or if you just find a child yeah. and then you just take them. Okay. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't. This is not sponsored by this, the public library. So uh, they don't support this message. Yeah. Don't not abduct children. Don't not. Uh, Look at you. You do it to me. You do it to me. <laughs> I said hey, do not. Bro. No, you said don't not. We can run it back. <laughs> wow. You are such a hater. I'm just saying. You do it to me. Anyway. Don't. I got to ask yeah, y'all. It's funny when I do it. Because <laughs> you salty. Anyway. Keep anyway. on going. <laughs> um, I forgot my job. Yeah, oh, yeah, good. yeah. So, like, like, you can get things like tickets, free tickets to... Pretty much any museum in the city. Um, you can watch free movies. classes. You can watch movies. They have a bunch of events. Like every single local library has an event. And so there's probably a, a library near you. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, not every community area has a library. Like I, I learned that. Um, not too many of them. Though. Ravenswood doesn't have a library. Yeah, not too many. It's, it's not, not too wild. many. Non uh, right. community neighborhoods. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and so, like, you can you can go to free events. They have free homework help. They have, um, f- I, like I said, f- mentioned free tickets. They have book clubs. They have authors come through and do readings. It's just such a cool resource that people mm-hmm. do not utilize. There's IT classes. There's like help in resumes. There's they help you find jobs. Like, th- there's just so much. So and, much. And every librarian we've encountered. Ever, even before this podcast, has just been so nice. Yeah. Um, so that kind of sets the tone of what we're going to be talking about right now. Uh, so this is kind of like twofold type of thing. We're talking about the uh, the museum, and then we got a uh, special collection we're going to talk about, which we've talked about on the podcast before. Uh, but first, some so flowers. Yeah, some, I'm, muse- I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, not museum, but uh, um, a collection that we're, we'll be talking yeah. about. Um but some more flowers for the uh, Chicago Public Library. If y'all don't know that it is celebrating 150th anniversary. Yep. Uh huh. Let me give it to it. Uh, 150th anniversary of being around and and being what it is. So here's the cool thing about the uh, Chicago Public Library. Mm-hmm. If you all don't remember us talking about it, or if you just joined in, let me enlighten you again. The Public Library started after the Chicago Fire and almost. Uh, in part of the Chicago Fire, right? Um, a real brief, brief cross layer history here. You can go back and check out our episode that mm-hmm. uh, talks about it. But uh, after the Chicago Fire, a lot of books, a ton of books, were donated to uh, the Chicago to Chicago from Europe yeah. um, because they thought that people should be able to read and get access. and And here's how we're going to give you know. Um, make that happen so they donated england donated a ton of books to a uh burned down chicago uh and uh that is how we got started very 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 <laughs> brief uh overview yeah. and so here we are 150 years later uh and chicago public library still one Thriving. of the best now here's some fun stats about this uh about chicago public library it's got over almost six million different volumes right. of uh of uh Things that you can uh, check out from the Chicago Public Library, again, free. Mm-hmm. Uh, that makes it uh, top 10 uh, in the uh, public libraries in the United States by volume and 30th um, largest uh, academic uh, or public library in the United States by uh, volume. Now, here's the check it out. Here, this, is, <laughs> this is a crazy stat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Chicago Public Library is the second largest library system in Chicago by volume. Huh? 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 <laughs> what? Uh, here's here's what it, here's what that means. Uh, the largest <laughs> is the public is um the Chicago the University of Chicago Library. Oh, yeah. But that's not fair. It is. I, not, guess, I, mean, I guess. It is. It's I guess it is. It's literally a fair comparison. Yeah. 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 Um. But that's uh that's something interesting. That's, I did not know. That's interesting. Uh, sure. it's it's also the second largest uh public library system in the Midwest. Uh. Detroit is uh, the largest. Detroit. Detroit <laughs> is the largest. 
Uh, enough of those uh, stats there, but that just gives you a pretty um, pretty uh, brief overview of why we're talking about the Chicago Public Library. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what we're talking about. We're going to take you on a brief history of the Vivian G. Harsh Research Collection, okay, which is very very dope. Um, and if you don't know what that is, uh, the Vivian G. Harsh um, Research Collection is the largest collection of African American history and literature in the Midwest. Yep. So uh, if you want to know about <laughs> black folks in the Midwest, this is the place to be this right here in Chicago. But who is Vivian G. Harsh? Who, who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Let's take you on a brief history of who she is. Vivian G. Harsh uh, was born and raised here in Chicago mm-hmm. uh, on the south side. Uh, wow. <laughs> throwback. And um, uh, she basically uh, was, um, she's noted as being like w- one of the Chicago Public Library's first black librarians, right? She also was the first something else. We'll get to it. Um, but uh, she was she was noted as being one of the first. Mm-hmm. And it was in those times, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, in those times to be, you know, a black librarian, you know, they, we Clearly just, nobody else was doing it. You so. know, we just got out of an era yeah. where they didn't even want us to read. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, right. well, we're a lot still of people, in it actually. Yeah. Right. I was going to yeah. say it's so yeah, we, 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 at this point, the twenties, she was born in, uh, 1890. Right. Um, two years before, uh, the train systems. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she was, she, you know, she was born in those times. And then, you know, we're talking the twenties, you know, you got the great migration going on. This, mm-hmm. that, and the other, um, so she was the first, right? And she took her position uh, in 1924. 1924, she became a librarian. She did that job for 34 years. That's wild. Y'all, she passed away in eight in 1958. I want y'all to just think about that. We all, me, Sarah, we always talk about these years are not far away. Granted, we're about 70 years away from that right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, but like a lot of our, like, Parents, parents and yeah. grandparents are that age. My mom is sixty, so yeah. like you know, my dad was two, almost. He was about to be born. He was yeah, two same. years later. Yeah, so uh, and actually, she died two months before my dad wow. was born. Um, uh, which is which is absolutely crazy. Um, that's uh, wild. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely wild. Um, but so she she's born and bred here, in Chicago, right? Mm. And, and a very integral integral part of uh, our history here, and. So, while she was doing that, right, she took a job, and I'm again, this is kind of brief here, but because we got nice dialogue about mm-hmm. what the collection holds, uh, she took a job over at the George Cleveland Hall uh, Library Branch in 1932, and the reason why that is significant is because when she was there, uh, especially in the Bronzeville areas where mm-hmm. she's from, uh, when she was there, she made it a point, and again, I told you that. A lot of black folks weren't reading. You were coming from the South. Right. She made it a point that when you came from the South, as a black person, you had to you had to be better, right? Mm-hmm. And she, when you came inside of her library, you got to dress right. Yep. You had to um, look right. You had to be quiet. You had to be there and learn. Right. And when she was at the uh, the Hall Branch Library, she actually started a bunch of programs. Uh, she had a uh, what was called the Special Negro Collection mm-hmm. uh, at the library, and that was a, a big research hub for a lot of people that yeah. came there. She, uh, and as she was the, she was named. I skipped over this. She was named the director in 1932, yeah. right? Uh, which is the highest position there. Um, and she organized a bunch of different community programs for Black History clubs, literary studies, mm-hmm. you know, different forms, art exhibits, storytelling sessions, uh, so on and so forth. So basically, she made it a place where Black people and everybody, because it was all inclusive for right, her, right. everybody could be there and learn yeah. and, 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 and t- intake in that. You know, reading is fundamental. We've been saying that for decades now, centuries. You know. Um, and so that's what she did. Yeah. Um, and she she worked with, you know, a bunch of different people. I mean, Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, yep. uh, Charlemagne Hill Rollins. I mean, which Langston Hughes. This is the, the list is extensive. Right. So how do we get to that collection? Well, what she started in her research, mm-hmm. her research began. She would go down, you know, south and in different parts of, of America, mainly south grab some collection, ask people, hey, can I use this so that we can learn more, you know, up here up north? And she started her collection because she knew that was important, right? She knew it was important. Right. But I'm not going to get into it. 
right? <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. We had a whole conversation about yes. it. Yes. Uh, and I'm actually done blabbing because this is, this is, uh, I've been talking for a while. Yeah, blabby, blab, blab. I have been. Uh, <laughs> but we talked to, we went to the Vivian G. Hearst collection, which is located now in the Woodson branch mm-hmm. of the Chicago Public Library over there in Washington Heights. Like I said, we talked about this. Over there. Yeah, over there in Washington Heights, east of, um, uh, Bronzeville. So, uh, uh, uh not Bronzeville. I'm sorry. Um, what is, uh, uh, Beverly, Beverly, yeah, Beverly, uh, <laughs> East of Beverly. So we went there and we searched, we researched mm-hmm. <laughs> the the, uh, the the collection, and, yep. and and oh my goodness, it was beautiful. We it spoke was wild. It was wild. We spoke with Stacy Williams, uh, who is an archivist uh, that works there. Archivist is it archivist or archivist. You, you look archive at person. I, you say let's take that. <laughs> let's take the easy road. Archivist, <laughs> archivist, um, mm-hmm. who 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 actually works there and yep. uh, works hand in hand. So, without further ado, let's pass it over to that conversation. Let's. So right now we are here with Stacy Adams. Stacy Adams. Yeah. Right now we are here. That happened a lot in seventh grade. <laughs> yeah, in real <yeah>. life. <laughs> Stacy Williams yeah. uh, at the Vivian G. Harsh uh, exhibit or, or research or, or collection. Research, research collection. Research collection, um, and which we told you is the largest collection of African American uh, literature and um, uh, things. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> things. Uh, in the Midwest. So, Stacy, thank you for being here. You got some dope stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for coming and for having the interest. Um, and yes, as you pointed out, the Vivian Harsh Research Collection is the largest collection of black history related materials in the Midwest, mm-hmm. um, kind of like a Schomburg equivalent. And the head of that branch, Uh, or the head of that location, this collection was at the Hall Branch at the time, Mm -hmm. um, and the head of that location was Vivian G. Harsh. Mm -hmm. So these documents I have here, or the items that we've chosen, it's, it's, to me, they represent, I think, really important things about thought and intention and idea and how we are including different people in the process of literacy and scholarship and collective gathering, all of that great stuff. So uh, here was a statement about the Hall Branch, um, how the Hall Branch was actually designed. And folks should know that the branch, which opened in 1932, opened as a response to the influx of migrants who were coming to Chicago from places all over the South. Um, And so Vivian Harsh, who was working at CPL at the time, she, she said, you know, there's obviously a great need here and there should be a branch. Uh, so uh, also a local philanthropist, George, mm-hmm. George, uh, George Hall also felt that. And so they worked, uh, there was a, a big collaborative working together with CPL and with George Hall and with the Rosenwald uh, family in order to purchase the land that the Hall branch now sits on oh, wow. in Bronzeville. And then staff that, Vivian Harsh, was Chicago Public Library's first black, black. library. Yeah manager, yep. like branch, wow. ha- ba- branch manager, mm-hmm. um, and she in turn hired Charlamagne Hill Rollins, who was Chicago Public Library's first black children's librarian. So this document here, uh, it just talks about a rundown of what the building looked like. And so again, when you think about who the branch was for and what it was intended to do, um, Vivian Harsh understood that many folks were coming up from the South in spaces where they did not have access to literacy, in places where they were not allowed to go into the library because the city itself was segregated or under Jim Crow laws. So coming to Chicago and saying, here's the expectation, we are imagining Mm -hmm. a future where here is a place you can come and learn everything you need to learn in order to fully participate in the civic life that is happening up here. And uh, I think that is like as we sit here and we talk about this, it's just it's just amazing that like how Chicago how anybody can say anything negative and all the negative stuff that's like with this kind of history and for I know you're gonna see the B roll or you've seen the B roll already, but it's right here in front of us. This is like literally like the plans yeah. of them talking about what they envision, you know, a Chicago public library for black folks to be like. And you know what I love? I I love that it took 
one person to be like, this is needed and we need to make it happen. Just do it. This like, is needed. Like, just one person. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. This is needed. Well, I mean, no, it's, it, it is that it is someone looking around, mm -hmm. acknowledging conditions and saying, let us do something to change these conditions. So uh, the manner in which she did work, which was deeply about working with community um, and is, is essentially, you know, the work that we're doing with the archives and special collections here at CPL in general, it really just follows in the footsteps of the vision that, that Vivian Harsh had, but that she relied on the assistance of you know many 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 people to help mm -hmm. get that going. Yeah. So the building itself, she envi you know envisioned was was actually a grand gathering space mm -hmm. um, and something that looked beautiful on the outside um, and said you are welcome here in this space. This is this is for you. Yeah. Um, the other item that I chose was is a photograph um, from one of the very first. Negro History Weeks because, among other things, uh, Ms. Harsh was a consummate networker and she knew all of the like scholar scholarly and literary folks of the day. So she was very good friends with Carter G. Woodson. Mm -hmm. um, and Negro History Week, when it first, uh, shortly after it was first implemented, was being celebrated at the Hall Branch. So this is a photograph of uh, young people who are engaging in what was that Negro his that first Negro History Week, uh, and this was well, not necessarily the first. So this was 1944. But what you also see, and again, this is about that intention and that vision, uh, was that Vivian Vivian G. Harsh did also insist that you come into this space of learning with respect. Right. Um, now for her. And in that time and in that era, that meant if you were coming in to study about this history, that you you came in looking nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had on a suit jacket. Yep. Maybe uh, you know you definitely were very well behaved. Right. Um, the the historian and activist Tim Black uh, had had told stories in the past of how Vivian Harsh used to shh him in the library, wow. like young man, <laughs> young man. Yeah. I love. Um, Could you imagine being shushed <laughs> by, <laughs> shush by Vivian Harsh? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a, just a really, the idea and intention that here are all these young people, because who you can also see in this yeah. photograph is, is Charlotte May Hill Rollins. So you have these young people at, at the Hall Branch, and it was very intentional to say, it is important that you also learn this history. It is important that we are also including and engaging you in this act of knowledge production, scholarly creation, and knowledge sharing mm -hmm. here in our community about our lives mm -hmm. and in ways that weren't just steeped in pathology, but right. that were also about you know joy and celebration and art and music and yeah. And what's really cool is, I don't think you understand, the first Negro History Week, which eventually became Black History Month. It started right here in Chicago, and this is a picture of the first like, this, is a, this is a picture this of, is a picture. of Negro History Week as it was being celebrated and after its implementation. Yeah, that we, wow. that all great things, yes, are started here in Chicago, but that this was one of the yeah. perhaps greatest things that was started here in Chicago yeah. because mm -hmm. the impact is so broad and so deeply meaningful um, when it is engaged we with. Yes, because we have cleaned our hands. We washed our hands. We have washed our hands. So, so, don't so we're placing it gently. Like yeah. Look at this, y'all. Like, look at this. I'm gonna move my hair side this up. is a literal picture from the first. Not first. One of, one of the first yeah. black that Negro history weeks. Like, look at that. It's just, it's just amazing. Oh my God! Look, let me put this down. Let me put that down. Like that. Yeah, that's like, scary. I wash my hands, but I don't want to touch anything. <laughs> I, you know, I'm like so. So we went to uh, we went to Egypt, and she was like, "No, nah, I don't want to go inside the pyramid." I was like, "Let me go. <laughs> let me go." I have always I I I can't lie. I mean, there is um, for some people who work with archival material, there's certainly an aspect to like the materiality yep. of a thing. You know, as you're touching it, and this is yes, yeah, extremely old. Yep. You know, print. There is. There, there is for some folks. Yes, it's it's the material, it's the experience you have with it. Yeah. Um, I think what's really special about the work that Vivian Harsh was doing here at CPL and and Charlotte May Hill Rollins, and the folks who were staffers at this branch is that they they understood that it was even more than just having access to the books. Yeah. Right. It was that you needed 
to create a space mm -hmm. where people could come and right. discuss ideas and feel included to be discussing these ideas, quite honestly, with a high level of sophistication. Right. I mean, right. these are the, that was the expectation. Right. Right. And those librarians helped create the conditions to meet that expectation right. by providing access to materials that everybody could use if you came to the public library. And that's yeah. so, and that's Chicago probably the best place to start something like this mm -hmm. because um, as we know, Chicago Public Library started because of the Chicago Fire, um, had books donated to us. And granted, it was donated to us, maybe not the black folks, but. <laughs> well, so, well, so actually, this is, so this is, it is a interesting, I say interesting, it is an auspicious time to have yeah. this conversation because Chicago Public Library is celebrating its 150th year. 150th year. We are one of the oldest public library systems in the country um, and certainly largest. And so I, I think looking at the, at the work here and the vision, um, I think it's just an example of a lot of the ways in which Chicago Public Library was out in front and yeah. was, you know, had staff who were thinking right. in really forward thinking ways about how how can we be more inclusive of all of our communities um, and, and create the conditions so that even more people can be mm -hmm. involved? Not just a, here's a space you've come into and I've given you a book, but now he, I've given you a book and here's also a room in which we can now go and have a conversation about right. that book. Yeah. And here are some artists who can you know, tell you yeah. about yeah. the writing of that book. Yeah. Someone like Gwendolyn Brooks, who would show up all the time, or yeah. Langston Hughes, That's who was sharing his work, like or Richard Wright, who you know, have, <laughs> You know, her, her engage, yeah, absolutely, absolutely yeah. her engagement with people like that. Or the work of people like Dr. Margaret Burroughs, who, who had significant engagement yeah. with the Chicago Public Library, but also helped start, as we know, the DuSable yeah. um, and yeah. the Southside Community Arts Center. Like, yeah. the nexus of those folks and their involvement with uh, the Hall Branch mm -hmm. and with the programming that Vivian G. Harsh was helping pull together and creating and facilitating and making that space for, that's really... That's that's what makes the public library more than just yes. a yeah. place for the books. Yes. Even even today, I think well, the Chicago Public, it's one of our favorite city things that yeah. we often use. Yeah. Uh, people don't know that like you can get if you have kids, you can get access to most museums. You can uh, take free classes. You can mm -hmm. take there's career building classes. There's there's so much that it offers that is not books. Right. It's it's wild to me that people don't use it. And the coolest thing about it all is that you walk through here right now, you can see folks mm -hmm. in here in different rooms mm -hmm. and doing exactly what you just, you talking, know, talked about. Having conversation. Yeah, having a conversation. Absolutely. There's actually book clubs that yeah. are oh, absolutely. part of, you know, you absolutely. could be part of a library book club. Vivian Hirsch uh, had a women's reading circle back yeah. in the day and the women would meet at Hall Branch and, yeah. and yes, here is this space that we are making to discuss literature, to discuss art, to discuss social and economic issues that yeah. are a part of our community yeah. and we want the opportunity to comment on those things. Yeah, um, yeah it's really, it is, it's what we're hoping to help excavate more for folks in this 150th year. Chicago is an amazing city mm -hmm and our archival and special collections that document that. Um, I mean, so yes, we have Harsh, uh, this, uh, this vast representation of black life in the Midwest. We also have the Northside Neighborhood History Collection where we've documented quite a bit of immigrant life, mm -hmm. um, documentation, population shifts, uh, and then our special collections and preservation, which is downtown, which holds a lot of the city records. We have quite a few. Mm -hmm. um, and But also holds things like our Chicago Theater Collection. Mm -hmm. wow. Um, and holds things like other political collections. So obviously it's, it's the Harold Washington Library Center. Mm -hmm. We have Mayor Washington's political papers, right. yep. which at this point in history, looking back on them, have incredible historical yeah. relevance. Yeah. So yeah. just understanding the ways that Chicago history is vast and touches very many things. Yeah. and people in the city do not have to be studying right. or affiliated with anything. They can come into the library, they can come into the archives and learn about all of this history. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's really cool is the fact that we have, you know, we're here <laughs> with all this right now, right? We're, we're here looking at it all, it's laid out, and I mean, I'm just amazed, but what's even cooler though, not only we'll get to what's here, right? But like how Vivian Harsh collected it all. A lot of times she went 
to these places uh, down south and said, hey, let me get this. One thing in particular as we talked about is the, uh, the Green Book. Mm -hmm. And the Green Book is, is just amazing. If you all don't know about the Green Book, go ahead and check out the uh, little link right here. Uh, <laughs> but the, it's, it's really cool because that book explained how black folks should move. And she went and got that, and it's here. <laughs> you know, so, a well, copy actually, of it. A copy say, of it yeah. So we have a, there have been copies of the Green Book. So, I, so to be fair, many people would have copies of right. the Green Book. Right. Because the Defender would publish it every summer. My, my own grandparents who would travel, they had a copy of the Green Book um, that they would use because, yeah, absolutely, you would be driving through places. Uh, maybe you would need to stay at a certain type of inn if you were down south. Mm -hmm. Places were not <laughs> the yeah, they, same way yeah. they were up here yeah, in Chicago. Right. So being able to travel that way, absolutely. But what she, so what she would do was um, collection, so what, <laughs> What we call that yes. is collection development, collection development, collection management. So as she was looking around at this need and, and also helping implement things like Negro History Week here at Chicago Public Library, she also understood that you have to keep collecting those right, materials right. in order to essentially meet like whatever contemporary right. uh, research need was happening at the time. So absolutely, she would travel on her weekends, she would travel on her vacations and she wow. would go, you know, meet, basically she was meeting people in the places that they were at right. and saying, I am building and developing this collection about Negro life here in Chicago. Right. Would love to have your work be a part of it. How yeah. can we, you know, how can we talk about this? How can we, how can we help get your work here among the people? Wow. Um, a collection I saw, I'm gonna say I saw this collection very recently and the only reason I'm not saying the name is because because I want you to come back and ask okay. me about it. Oh, oh. But, we'll, we'll come back, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a truly fantastic collection where, it, where therein was a letter signed by W.E.B. Du Bois where he's saying, you know, when's the next time I can get here to Chicago? You all are doing some tremendous organizing here on the ground. What's good? We'll be so, back. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back, wow. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, just think, it, like, the fact that those things are here and what we're attempting to do now really is identify, move through what those collections are so that we can start making sure that people know about them, getting right. them cataloged, uh, moving through what, I mean, everybody has a backlog. Everybody right. has a backlog. Right. So we're just yeah. looking to try to move through ours as best as we can so that people are aware, like, we have, we have some tremendous histories yeah. to share. And what's cool is that it's always here because you can't technically check it out. You can't check it out. Yeah. You can make an appointment and yeah. come see it. We yeah. say appointment because things like this, as they're in the folders that they're in, it just takes us time to go That's through the folders. Yeah. So yeah. if you give us a call, you can generally yeah. get an appointment yeah. within a couple of days yeah. after that, of one, you know, once we know what you're looking for. But absolutely, you don't have to be working on a fancy paper. Right. You could say, I just really want to know. Yeah, I just want to yeah, see it. I just, wanna see it. I just really want to know. Exactly yeah. you, what we did. you can <laughs> also be working on a fancy yeah, paper right, yeah, and say, right. well, I really need to see this for you yeah. know such and such purposes. Uh, so certainly, I mean, I, a lot of the things I showed you today came out of our either Black Renaissance collection, mm -hmm. which does represent a, a spectrum of like events and, and organizations and people that happened during that time that Vivian Harsh might have been a part of uh, or related to. But then it also comes out of like the actual Hall Branch collections um, or Vivian Harsh's papers. And those things, it, you know, they're special certainly, I think, for folks who are interested in imagining mm -hmm. what the future of libraries can be. Right because we have the evidence here of what it already was, right. mm. what it currently is, and, and yeah, just a basis, a basis to imagine some, some new and different places. That That's a bar. You, whenever, whenever you do something like this, you gotta, you gotta end right there. Yeah. Like, you gotta what end else? right there. We can't add anything. Stacy, if you could tell people, like, what times you open, how they can book, and things like that. Absolutely. Uh, so first things first, go to our website, shypublive at, uh, dot org. Mm -hmm. Shy Pub. Is it live? It, well, I say <laughs> live I because it's Shy short Pub. for library. Yeah. But this is the thing Leo. that happens. Shy this, Pub this happens yeah. with librarians all the time. <laughs> yeah. There is like absolutely a user tool that folks have to live, and they have been beefing about <laughs> Lib or Live for a long time. It's live over here. I'm getting, I know, Leo. I'm giving like wild tea right now. Like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> 
<laughs> wild librarian tea in these states. It is. <laughs> I pronounce it lib because I know it's short for library. L I B. Yeah, so L I B. C H I P U B L I B dot org. Oh, download um, the app. Yes, or download the app. And on the website, we've actually recently reorganized some of the collections related to studying history mm -hmm. on our website. So check the website. We have a new tab on the menu, Chicago History and Collections, so people can find the vast resources, including events and programming related. Um, there you can also find the contact information for each of the three archival repositories that we have in the system um, and make an appointment to, to go in. And everything is free. Free, okay. Well, yes, it's free because we're the public library, yeah. but you do not need um, you do not need to spend any money or give us anything to come in and see these amazing historical materials and exhibits. Y'all yeah. get out here. You know, get out here. one one last thing that I really love is using the the archives of the library, like looking up pictures of things that have been archived. We do that all the time. All the time. And every time it, it says like it's. Um, uh, it's license free. We put that in the podcast. Public yeah. domain. Yeah. Public and domain. but things that are in the public domain and things that people have opened up their copyright for. Because that's a little this is the last yeah. little tea I'll share. Share it. The share reason it. that everything isn't all online, that we haven't digitized it all, <laughs> is because a lot of stuff that got collected at a certain point in time is uh, it's under copyright. Right. The library is not the creator of many of right. the materials right. that we store. So yeah. Therefore, we don't have permission to put, to put certain on. things right. online. Right. Uh, so I think we're also doing, as of recently, is working with donors to share kind of what that means mm -hmm. in terms of an expectation for, you know, people say, well, I, I want it digital. I want right. to see it online. Right. So we have to then work with donors to say, okay, what is in your collection that you have the right to mm -hmm. let us put online? Mm -hmm asking a different question. I think it's even cooler though, like it forced people to get out here. Like get out here, like just, yeah. Come on <laughs> come out, on, come on come out Come on out yeah. and just ask the question. Yeah. We'll, like that, that's the door open. That's literally how we found it. <laughs> yeah, we we literally. were eating and they, they said, uh, the Green Book, and we this, were like, what is like, that? This, this site was in the Green Book as a hotel. And I was like, it was? What? And then we were like, well, we're right down the street yeah. from let's, the let's go. Let's yeah. go. Let's go Check see it, it. And then that's when we learned you had to like make an appointment and all that kind of stuff. And We didn't have we, an appointment. We did, but they were so nice to be yes. like, hey. They <laughs> still let us I'm in. so glad. Yeah, yeah, they were so nice <laughs> to so let glad. us do it. Yeah. Yes, um, we try to be. Um, yeah, no, it, it really, we we would encourage people because that really is the thing too. I mean, the, there is there is history here, and I think in in a lot of ways people do not feel as though they have access to it or that right. it is accessible to yeah. them. So yeah. this is here, this is accessible, and people should be excited to learn more about their history. We we've been doing it for all this time. We you know we want to do it for another 150 That's, years. Like let's keep going. We will. Let's keep we telling will. these stories, <laughs> sharing this history. Stacy, thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. That was, I learned, so, first of all, the generosity for the team at the library to pull out all of those documents for us to look at is wild to me. Like, all we did was send an email. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And they were like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. mind you, this anyone can do this. This is not, like, exclusive because right. we got a podcast. Right. Like, anyone can email for an appointment, like Stacy mentioned, and get access to um, whatever is in the collection, it's right. meant to be seen by anyone. Right. So just because it's a special collection, and you know, like we said, you can't physically check it out of the right. library. Right. But you know, and honestly, you that's better. Yeah, I, like I was about that. to say yeah, because then you make sure you well one you preserve it. Mm -hmm. Two, it's accessible to anyone at any time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if it, if you literally if you just want to see it for fun, you can go. But you, if you just want to yeah. see the diary of. Who, uh, Charlemagne, you know I mean? yeah. Rollins, you know what I mean? Like, you could just go in there and look at it. Which is crazy to me, y'all. I, I have, I, w just wild, you're right. Like, just absolutely crazy yeah. for us to be touching something that is like, at this point, almost, almost, a hundred. well, it's 150 years old, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, no. Nah, I mean, no. not, not 150, but 120, you know what I mean, years old. No. Almost, be um, 100 years old. What? I'm 100, yeah, what, what's wrong with me? Yeah, <laughs> simple math, my bro, <laughs> my my guy, uh, hundred years old. But still, to touch something like that yeah. and, and like to look at it and to see a letter from Langston Hughes and, and Gwendolyn Brooks. I touched right. the letter from Gwendolyn Brooks. Like I touched the letter that she yeah. wrote and I, I read it out. But th like to me, that's the stuff that you know you you 
we don't know here exists in Chicago. And that's why we say there's a lot of stuff here there's in Chicago. And this is not find. this is not the only special collection in the city. Oh, there's no. there's multiple and um but here's the thing is that every library you go into there's something special about that that space. Right. right. The Chinatown Library is yeah. one of the most beautiful yeah, in the, the city. Architecturally it just looks if so good. If you've never been to the Howard Washington, yeah. like you are literally missing out. Don't even go to rent out a book. Right. Just go See? and walk through the floors yeah. because every floor has an easter egg of city history in mm-hmm. it that's kind of wild. Yeah. Like Yeah. Uh, one of the flo- it, we didn't even know about it like we we weren't there for with, we were there looking for a specific piece that we had put on hold but um one of the security guards was like have you been on the seventh floor and we're like no there was never a reason for us to go there right. and or i can't remember if it's exactly the seventh floor but one of the floors has all of the Eighth. um suge- like the uh, submitted designs for the library or what it could have looked like yeah and all of the models like the 3d yeah. models of what the library could have looked like which is insane like yeah. it's so cool to see and you see the model that the library was actually done after you see? Yeah. um in there there's art there's uh there's walls and walls of records that you can yeah. you can check out. All kind of old school um, stuff. There's so much music. There's um, there's just so much. There's just yeah. so much. You can go and I can't remember what episode we did that was on the library that we went to the Har- Harold Washington. Do you remember? I can't remember. I can't remember. We, Scroll through our YouTube yeah, and, yeah. and see. And there's some like really cool visuals from that from that day that we spent there. So, um, but yeah, this is really dope. The Vivian G. Harsh. I mean, there's so much history. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Uh, one thing that sticks out to me is like actually holding a picture <laughs> of of the meeting one of the first weeks of National uh, Negro Month, Negro History uh, Week. Yeah. Like, and uh, if you don't know, uh, if or didn't listen to that, but the Black History Month started here in Chicago. Yeah. At the, at the YMCA yeah. and over a conversation, and this, and, mm-hmm. but it started with National um uh ne- negro history week yeah uh and to hold a picture that of the first of one, the fir- of the, one of the one of the first of the weeks first, yeah. and also uh the itineraries there are two itineraries mm-hmm. one from 1934 and then the other one yeah. i want to say 1951 yeah. um was right there i flipped yeah. it through that it's crazy Unru- like oh my it's goodness crazy. and if you want to see any of those things um Without going to the library, you can go head over to our YouTube channel. Hey. If you just look up 77 Flavors of Chicago, we'll come right up. You can see the video of us in the library. Um, there's some B-roll. You can see Stacy talking about this the same interview, but uh, in person. You can see the pieces that we pulled from yes. the collection to yeah. look at. Um very dope. Very dope. Very dope. Go but check yeah, it out. Go check it out yourself. Please go do. check it out yourself. It's accessible by public transportation. There's a bus that stops right outside of the library. Uh, depending where you are in the city, it might take you an hour to get there. But right. you know, you right. just you just gotta just do it. Make the trek. Just, just There's some it. great food around that area. Yeah. Oh yeah. Top notch around there. Top notch Afro around Joe's it. around yeah. there. Yeah. And, and, and more. Yeah. And so more. much more. But yeah. that's not where we ate today. No. You know, we traveled. Uh, we we trekked over to uh, Bronzeville. Oh, we had to go there. The Blues District. Mm. And uh, let's take a quick little break and come back and talk about the food today. Let's do that. All right, we are back uh, with the food portion of this episode, and today we went to Peaches. Peaches and Cream. Peaches and Cream. It is on the corner. Not Peaches. The name, that's not the name of the yeah, restaurant. That's, that's just Dario riffing. <laughs> yeah. um, the restaurant is located on the corner of uh, MLK Drive yep. in Bronzeville yep. in the uh, Blues District, right across the street from the Harold Washington Cultural Center. Yes. Um, that, that block has so much going Fire. on. There's so much... There's so much to see. There's so much to. There's yeah. so much history in that block yeah. specifically, um, and yeah. it's just so you know. Yeah, it feels the the. I mean, it feel like a black yeah. metropolis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it feels like that. Yeah. Um, it, but and the, it's the signs and everything. Like yeah. the, like you can see. It's the, really oh, cool. God, it's so dope. It's really, but, it's really really. Cool. I think you know people ask us what you know what's our favorite. I don't know. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I can't, I honestly can't pick. Like every it's hard every, to pick. every community area we go into, I'm like this is. Damn insane yeah right like, when you start to dig yeah. you know what i mean like you're yeah. like damn okay like this is here but anyway right. um <laughs> anyway continue um, about the food but so yeah we went to peaches today which is mm. peaches is is uh technically a breakfast restaurant it right. runs till 2 p.m so if uh you're under the age of 70 you might not have dinner at 2 p.m but it is <laughs> you, you missed that hey, joke why did, yeah that yeah, did hold on <laughs> 
<laughs> it took yeah, me a so second. Joke. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, I think it's a perfect place to have lunch in the middle of the week, honestly. Like yeah. a 12, 12 p.m. lunch. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, but a little bit about the owner, uh, Chef Cliff, Cliff Rome. He is the owner of uh, Peaches, and they've been around for eight years. They're very community-based. Mm -hmm. um, they are very supportive of the community. They do a lot of work with youth in the community. He He's really passionate about helping people uh, train to become part of the service industry and hospitality industry. And so he has a program set up for that. He's, he's a, I mean, he's a wonderful chef, um, very well-known. He's cooked all over the world he's worked with wolfgang puck like he's he's been all over yeah um and so this is this is one of his projects obviously one of his like restaurants or one of his projects whatever you want to call it and um it is it's so like you walk in the place is so open and airy mm -hmm. okay it's i would say it's pretty simple in terms of decor there's some art there's um it's peach themed it's peach themed <laughs> um, yeah yeah and it is it's just so like it's just so it, it's not a di it doesn't have the diner feel you no, know what definitely i mean not a diner. like, when, like you a restaurant. Think, when you think of like um what's the what's the place that we went to that has like breakfast we went to with the uh, shy food local um i know. forgot but it's, yeah. it's like one of the oldest restaurants in the city dailies dailies there we go yeah. that's what i think of when i think of like a place that serves breakfast until 2 p.m right is i think of a place like dailies but this doesn't have that vibe it has like a like a more modern vibe to it um this everyone there that was like super nice, super, super friendly, nice, super friendly. The I, I like it feels like you know like because it's very lit in there, very yeah. well lit. Just like it feels bright. So like if you I don't know, windows, I think, I think like about peach. Just, like peach yeah, feels yeah, I mean, like a happy right, you know, like, <laughs> right. It feels like juicy. Yeah, know? right. Mm. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, you know the colors. The orange is my favorite color. So they got like the orange peachy color there all around. Some yeah. yellow in there. Pretty dope sayings on the wall, pictures yep. on the wall. <laughs> so, um, very dope. Like like yeah. Sarah said, food is nice. I mean, I mean uh, the staff is nice. Yeah, the, the staff, staff is nice. just you. You ready to talk about the food? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, no. I was I was just thinking. So immediately, right, you get in there. The mm -hmm. the hostess, you know, they kind of have each other back, which is really dope. Uh, kind of to the point that Sarah was saying how the 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 it's cultivated by you know bringing people in and teach you how to be respectful, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you walk in, the hostess was like, man, I think uh, your, your, your server, server is busy, busy, so I got you. First things first, before we even sit down, hey, sit right there, but you want some uh, peach flavored coffee? Yeah, they have, so I was, I was really, I was really intrigued about the peach flavored coffee, um, but that was so good. I drank the first cup black i didn't yeah. add any creamer to it but then the second cup i added creamer and tastes like peaches and cream i yeah. was like this is so good yeah i i immediately put cream in my coffee but um it was is, it was fantastic y'all it was so good like like it i'm not even it was a really good cu cup of coffee yeah honestly. i mean it smelled like mm -hmm. it's first of all i don't know the science behind how you make coffee beans smell like peaches like well, you i don't know that you let the it's yeah what do you do like you, i mean i don't know what they did but like usually when you flavor coffee if you're doing it in like a natural way you let it sit mm -hmm. in in its thing like so shit i don't know coffee beans Probably. inside peaches like what, you know how like they put coffee beans in like whiskey barrels to give them that flavor, uh, i got you or, so you know what i mean but like but like if you if you're getting flavored coffee from like starbucks they probably sprayed with flavoring I, look, I I don't know what they but did, the, but they they don't they're not sp spraying flavoring on their coffee. <laughs> Could you imagine <laughs> using meal? They got no. <laughs> they drop some meal in the coffee wow. beans. All right. Anyway, um, oh. let's talk. Let's talk about what we ordered. Well, that was the first thing. Uh, that's not an order, but you get that. But yeah, that was the first thing. But then. That's where the fun started okay, happening. So we looked at the menu and we we're like, okay, we got to order all the things that people told us to order that we have to try. Yeah, okay. Yep. Which were the catfish, greens, and grits. Yep. Let's start. Okay. First of all, that is the biggest catfish fillet yeah. I have ever received you on get, a plate. You get two of them things. You get two of them. Oh. I would say they're probably like 12 inches long. Like it's probably, a, it's a it's, decent it's, size. It's decent size. Catfish fillet. Yeah. It's a decent size. It's very well seasoned. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it comes with a, si a sauce mm -hmm. on the side. Yeah. I'm Amazing. giggling, y'all, because I, I'm closing my eyes and I'm re reimagining this right now. Yeah. It, Sarah's not lying to what she described. <laughs> like the season, you know, it's good when you can see like the the lemon pepper and like the pepper yeah. and all that stuff on it. Like, oh you my can god, see all the seasoning, all the, all of it, just all of it. Oh. and and then when you bite into it, it's 
fluffy. Like it, it wasn't Amazing. overdone. My goodness, it was goodness. perfect. It was literally perfect. And if you're thinking catfish for breakfast, yes, 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 yeah, did we said. Well, that. we went there for like a brunch. T- uh, it That's kind of like, like what it is. Time, That's kind of like so what it is. Had, technically, we had it for lunch. But yeah, yes, but. Still, if you went up there prior to Mind brunch, you, we skipped we skipped their like breakfast portion and went to their peach's favorite. That's the part of the menu that we went to. But they have like pancakes and French toast and omelets, okay? And then they have like peach cobbler and caramel cake and biscuits. So, we skipped that portion mm-hmm. and then we went straight to the peach's favorites, which has a lot of like more lunchy items. Yeah. So, that's the first thing we got. We got the fried catfish Green mm. greens and grits. The greens yeah. were amazing. Amazing. And here's the thing. I, I you know, I kept it real nice this time. But usually cornbread and greens go together. Yeah. I take my fingers and I make them I, the I, little ball. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, you pop them. But yeah. I ain't do it this time. Yeah. I ain't do it this time. The grits were with cheese yeah. as they should be. Mm. Um, no sugar. Ugh. No sugar. If you if you we look just we eat oatmeal. Just right. eat oatmeal. Right, you just know what I'm saying? Right. Eat oatmeal. <laughs> That's it. Um the next thing we got was, and this is, they were so nice to do this. So two of the things that we ordered come with grits. Mm-hmm. And so we said, instead of ordering shrimp the and uh, shrimp and grits, we got shrimp added to one of our grits bowls, which yep. they were very happy to do. Yep. The shrimp, it comes with a garlic cream sauce, mm-hmm. bacon, mushrooms, tomatoes, scallions on top of cheese uh, grits. And mm. you did that is... I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> yep. Because as soon as the plate hit the table, mm. the smell... The smell. It just like I was like, this is this smells insane. Visually, I don't know, ain't nothing beating this. I mean, like this, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Be visually. beautiful, like but I the, mean, the oh. flavor is wild. God, like the, I didn't think g- creamy gar. I've never had a creamy garlic sauce shrimp on top of grits. Like usually, I don't even ask questions. I just eat it. I just saw. I just see things and I don't mind like. You, Dario said he ate it. And that shit had mushrooms in it. Right. That's how, I mean. I scooped the bad boys off. Yeah, yeah but yeah, you, you saw the mushroom juice on there. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. whatever. <laughs> you, you like mushroom. You just, now it's too, you're in too deep. You can't Damn. admit it. They, you no, know, I got to double down on what I'm doing. It was just, <laughs> no, but it, Your ego won't let you. Hey, look, th- first of all. That's toxic. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, it was so good. All that, all that, I mean, if you're thinking like, oh, shrimp and grits, you know, grits. Grips. And grits <laughs> shrimp, shrimp and grits. <laughs> you know, you're probably like, oh, this is, you know, we had it. But no, man. Like it never get old. Like yeah, was, that never get old. It was so good. It was oh. so good. Yeah, it was. It was. Really, well? I would definitely recommend that. That 100%. is, mind you, that is their top item on the menu. It goes yeah. shrimp and grits, catfish. Those yeah. are like the two top things on the menu. Yeah. Okay. For sure. For sure. So and not not us declaring this. This is like people that they, people, go there. The, the hood say that. Um. And each one of those plates, if you were to get the shrimp and grits as like a full platter, it's seventeen ninety five, and it comes with Texas toast. Mm-hmm. Um. But if you were get to, if you were to get the side of shrimp, just the sh- side of shrimp, uh, it would be seven ninety five. Um. Yeah. The next thing that we got was the hangover plate. Mm. Which is four fried chicken thighs mm. tossed in a signature sweet and spicy hangover sauce, which kind of tasted like a sweet buffalo sauce. You did uh, with two eggs that we had to get scrambled because Dario was a baby. First of uh, all, yeah, you got y'all got to stop coming at me for scrambled eggs. I, why do they make them then? Who eat the scrambled eggs? You and children. No, that's not not just you children. and seven year olds. It can't be just it just can't be who what look I ain't never seen. I drink okay. I drink my orange juice with no pulp. Mm. Is that childish? Yes. <laughs> is that childish? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it is. Look, y'all. No, that's a, that's a textural preference. That's fine. Same thing with eggs. But you haven't had a runny egg. I don't need to have runny eggs. What's the difference? You have to try it to know you don't like it. I, look at me. I have to back I, up from the mic so I can yell properly. But, but what do I need it for? So Because it's so delicious. You're missing out on life experiences. No, I yes, doubt it. I doubt are, it. I are. highly doubt it. You've never had an eggs benedict. <laughs> I don't care. Like I don't. But get, I, you have to experience it. It's so. What delicious. do it taste like? Do it taste like an egg? Mm-hmm. Okay, then what's wrong with me eating a scrambled egg? It doesn't it taste, taste like, like a egg. scrambled egg. Okay, what do a scrambled egg taste like? What's the difference? What is it? Is it more? It's like, the whole experience is different. You're not selling it. You're not selling me on it. I'll be honest. It's, I, like, That's not, because you're stubborn, I'm petty, stubborn. and toxic. Lord, toxic. What do they got to do with these? <laughs> like, the t- damn. Because you refuse to try things that you think you don't like. Y'all, I'm I'm befuddled right now because like I didn't, I don't understand. We had the same damn egg conversation every time. Every we come time, up. That's every because time you come continue up. to be wrong. This is like the damn mermaid bullshit. I let that go like a year <laughs> ago. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's talk about this chicken that yeah. is yeah back to correctly chicken. chosen as chicken thighs. <laughs> yeah, it, 
I mean, it's chicken thighs. They know what's up. They know they, what time it is. They and they come on a on a knife and a skewer. skewer. Yeah, knife skewer. Yeah. Oh my! And and so it's not full complete fried chicken thighs. No. Okay, they're like right. Uh, they are the brunch size, right. really. You know, yeah. Come on a piece of bread. You know how Chicago get down. You gotta you gotta put it on a piece of bread. Let that the, the the sauce soak into it. It is they were, that sauce. Listen, I'm not a buffalo sauce person. Yeah, right, that is right. not usually my sauce of preference. But this was like a sweet buffalo sauce. It did it was have a little a sweet. vinegary, a yeah. little sweet. It was like yeah. really interesting, super good, and yeah. the chicken was just so juicy. It was. I mean, it was. Uh, it was. It's messy. So, like, if you if you're trying to use your fingers, it's not that the, messy. It's not if you, you use eat it pork. fork. Yeah, yeah. But dial your legs with all five. So, fingers. Did, I mean, at, at, at this point, I look. I am who I am. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm grown. Mm. <laughs> like, let me. I'm grown. You know what I mean. Like, whatever. Let me be. You know. <laughs> this, I am. That shit is fire. Yeah, it's so good. It was. It was honestly, honestly that. Stole the show. I want to say it was between that and the catfish for me. What about the shrimp? Man, you're right. Damn, the shrimp and you can't pick. You can't pick. It's hard to Wait pick. Wait till we get the. It's biscuits. a three way tie. One A, one B, one C. Like mm. so far, right now. That's yep. that's how I got it lined up. You can't Fire. miss it. And then the, the eggs. Eggs are like uh, the eggs are good. I didn't even get. I didn't even try the eggs. Yeah, because it was scrambled. You hate them, yeah. but like it was. It was sure so I'm. good. <laughs> so good. Um. Uh. Like you didn't even like. Usually eggs is up there higher, but like you you. Bypass those yeah. really. Yeah. Um, uh, this plate was also seventeen ninety five. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, I was, I was just looking. <laughs> at, I was looking at the other things on the menu. Um, they have a Southern Benedict, which is chicken gravy, chicken sausage patties, and poached eggs served on top of a freshly baked made biscuit. I wanted that one, but I saw that poached egg, and I was like, nope. See, now we got to go try it because <laughs> I think you would love that. Uh, oh, gee, you're being yeah. such a hater. Yeah. There's, there's so many. There's shrimp, catfish, and chips. And mm, like, oh, it's so there's many so things. many different things on this menu that just everything slaps. You can also add a lot of this stuff as sides. Yes, so, like, if you, you want an extra fillet of catfish, you yeah. know, I think it's what five dollars or something like that. You um, add a, or seven dollars maybe. Side catfish fillet is five ninety five. So yeah, yeah. You add, you add. Uh, you can add whatever you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so we table. we did add. We added uh, four uh, chicken wings yes. for seven ninety five, and those were good. Yeah, they were small. They were, they were they're not small. They're average chicken sized without hormones. Right. What right, they right, are. right they're right. not jumbo wings. Yeah, they're not. You they're know not, what I mean? Yeah. They're regular chicken wings. Right. And uh, the only thing is that they're they're dry rub. There's no uh white right. sauce. Which is that. fine. Yeah, that's totally fine. Because after you you still got sauce from there. the uh, thighs on your fingers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's the best kind like of sauce. Yeah, it is. Um, that's what she said. <laughs> wow. Um uh, but they were good. You they get four of those, good. and that's a, that was a side piece. That was a side. Yeah, that was that was a side four piece. So you could get them in two, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, two thighs, I think, right? Uh, you can get two thighs yeah. or four wings. Yeah. So uh, that was dope. Uh, but the biscuits. Let's 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 jump to let's jump uh, to the biscuits. Listen, yeah. I've made biscuits at home, yeah. and they're great. I love the biscuits I mm-hmm. make at home. They, these biscuits would shit left, right, and up and down on my biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> they shit on a lot of biscuits. If yeah. you're being honest, yeah. they, they huge. Oh biscuits. my god, huge. they're so fluffy. You know yeah. how sometimes you need a gallon of water while you're eating biscuits because that yeah. should they be dry, dry as fuck. Those biscuits are so fluffy and flaky, and yeah. oh my god, I they, don't even know how to describe it. How can you be fluffy and flaky at the same time? Those are two opposites. And and, and the crazy part about it is that that's. That's just the biscuit. That's just the biscuit. To top the to set the biscuit off, it come with like the peach like think of like the, the what would like, be in a peach cobbler yeah, with just the peach just and the, the cinnamon and the sugar. Mm, and then you put it on the biscuit. Oh, you 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 crack that bad boy open like it's mm. a Sunday, like it's a Saturday morning, and then you <laughs> you put the you put the I put one, maybe two, depending yeah. on how freak freaky you trying to get you know? with it. You know? Yeah. Put the peaches on there. Uh, and then it come with and a little you sauce. Just you drizzle. Blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah, do that again. What you do? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you, you know, you do exactly what she did. Yeah. And, and oh my goodness, man. Yeah. That's. I feel like that's where peaches <sighs> shine. It. That's what peaches. That's what peaches shine. It's like yeah. if you gonna name yourself peaches. God damn it! You, you got, got peach. You better got peach on them every part of oh, the menu, hey, boy. And do it right, and they yeah, do, and they, they do. do. They go it's, crazy. It's not like you know, like not in a kitschy way. No, it's just straightforward. I mean? Shit, yeah. biscuits and put a peach on it, mm. and and it is what it is, and it tastes good. Peach coffee. Now that's a little kitschy. That's a little kitschy because I ain't no, never, but I love that. that it, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't just, like disgusting. No, 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 no. no I'm just saying, I mean? you know that that is kitschy because you don't see it. But yeah. that's I think it needs to be. Yeah, and honestly, I think their prices are very reasonable. Like all of their sides yeah. are two fifty or three fifty or two dollars, and that's like eggs, plain grits, cheese. You can get just cheese grits for three fifty. You can get chicken gravy. Like like the menu is 
good it, for, yeah. for, for what you Yeah, do. I think I think it's very reasonably priced. Yeah. Uh, the most expensive thing on the entire menu is uh, the breakfast bayou bowl, and it's eighteen ninety five. It's shrimp, alligator, sausage, potatoes, green peppers, onions, mushrooms, tomatoes, scallion, cheddar cheese, and your choice of an egg on top. Look at all that you get with it, though. Yeah. And, and I'm it, sure this portion is huge. Yeah, it's, I'm sure. Yeah, Every, I'm sure because everything is huge. Everything is. Yeah, yeah everything. Everything. Um, y'all look right there. And then look, here's what I would say do. Uh, if you, if you go early enough to the, um, Washington cultural center, yep. literally kitty corner, uh, walk across the boulevard mm-hmm. and okay. And then you go to peaches. That's a date. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's there's, a, honestly, there's so much to do in that area. Right. Like there's museums that you can go to. There's, there's so much. Yeah. Like it, other places you can hang out. You can go to the library and check it out and then take the bus down the street, down uh, to the corner and. Fun fact. Uh, I also had a comedy show down there. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Right next to the, uh, right down the street from uh, the uh, Harold Washington Culture Center. Wow. That comedy all over the place. Look at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all over the place. Y'all go check out yet yeah. again, Bronzeville for the win. You know, Bronzeville yeah. for the win. Like yeah. again. So uh and if if you're listening to this, when are they when are we gonna be listening to this? <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> the second week of what you, oh, right, what? Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm I'm already on vacation. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you like this episode, send it to someone you hey. like. If you did not like this episode, um <laughs> We'll do better. You know, you? maybe, right. maybe we won't. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, right, right. We uh, jumped all over that ending right there. <laughs> wow, that's what she said. <laughs> Bye. Hey, thank you for a hundred uh, thousand. Yeah, buddy. Here's a hundred thousand more. The next major milestone: two year birthday coming up. We planned it for it, y'all. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Peace out. Thank you so much for listening. We really hope you enjoyed that. Please follow us on all social media at 77 Flavors Shy. And if you have any ideas and things you want to learn about, please email us at media at 77 Flavors Shy. Dot com. Yeah, and if you could also head on over to our YouTube channel, same thing, 77 Flavors Shy, and give us a follow, give us a like, and give us a good rating there. Make some comments. Only Go ahead and subscribe. Like we love y'all. See you next week.